Welcome to Primary today. We're going to start off with an opening song. Today we're going to be going over Doctrine and Covenants 60 through 62, and we'll start off with a video. Imagine you're on a long journey with someone who doesn't pull their weight. They just sit there watching the scenery go by, singing, Blue Skies. Now add in heat, fatigue, hunger, and no Snickers bars, and it may make you want to yell, Why aren't you helping? Well. The early church members traveling between Missouri and Ohio are facing similar issues, and it ain't easy. Lovingly, the Lord reminds all of us, Be of good cheer, little children, for I am in your midst and have not forsaken you. It's August 8, 1831 in Missouri, and after dedicating the land and temple lot, the missionaries pack their bags and prepare for the long trek back to Kirtland. But before they leave, the Lord tells them in section 60, with some, I am not well pleased. Uh -oh. Because they didn't open their mouths and proclaim the gospel on the trip down as they were commanded. He tells them to repent and no longer be lazy with their talents as they travel back to Ohio. Hopping into their canoes the next day, Joseph and ten elders paddle east on the Missouri River. The first day goes okay, but the second day? Ugh. The oppressive Midwest heat, humidity, irritating bugs, and very little food cause the whole group to be cranky. Paddle on the right, not the left, the right! Whoa, whoa! Your right, not my right! Are you Not the C me? stroke, do the J stroke! Cow. The J stroke! Ah! What, are you asleep up there? Did you even see the rock? Look, these guys are not sailors, and some can't even swim. And this river is very difficult to navigate and full of dangers. After Joseph and Sydney are nearly capsized by a submerged tree, Joseph says, Enough for today. Everyone off the river. Let's set up camp and get some dinner. 
Stretching his tired muscles, W.W. Phelps turns back to the river huh? and is shocked to see the destroyer riding upon the face of the waters. Whoa, what a crazy day. After a hot meal, the group calms down, discusses their difficulties, and forgives one another. Except for Ezra Booth, who's become very bitter. Huh. Now, Ezra's a real pessimist, and he complains about Zion and Joseph's flaws and imperfections as a leader, prophet, and canoeer. The next morning, the prophet wakes up early and receives the revelation in section 61 about these dangerous waters. While this section may be confusing, let's look at what we do know for sure. First, God controls the whole earth, including the waters, not Satan. Second, the Lord doesn't say never to travel on boats or swim in water, but he did want these elders to travel safely. And third, the Lord warns the saints to travel with faith on these waters, referring to the Missouri River. You see, this river back then was treacherous full of bends and disease and sunken trees called sawyers, which sometimes took down entire steamboats. It was nicknamed the River of Destruction. Now, speaking to these elders, the Lord says a very interesting phrase three times. It mattereth not unto me. The first time, they can choose to either make or buy their watercraft to travel on. The second choice is to travel by water or by land as long as they fulfill their missions. And the third time, they can choose to travel all together or two by two. In other words, it's up to them to choose their own adventure. As long as they're preaching the gospel, it doesn't matter to the Lord. Today, many people get paralyzed by perfectionism and want to be exactly right or told what to do. But often the Lord's response is, it mattereth not unto me. In other words, he's not saying he doesn't care what we're doing but to put first things first and focus on what's most important. You know, put the big rocks in first, and then there's room for all the sand. Meanwhile, two other dynamic missionaries focusing on the best things were Hiram Smith and John Murdoch. Now, John's wife, Julia, had died a few months earlier, giving birth to twins, and he'd asked Joseph and Emma to adopt them since they'd lost their own twins days before. Okay. Like the other missionaries, John and Hiram were called to travel to Zion preaching along the way. But since they traveled via Detroit, they hadn't yet made it to Independence. But as they reached Cheriton, Missouri, Elder Murdoch is too sick to keep going. While there, David Whitmer and Harvey Whitlock also show up from a different direction. And then to everyone's amazement, Joseph Smith and the elders returning from Zion appear. It's an awesome reunion, like Alma and the Sons of Messiah reuniting and rejoicing together in each other's triumphs. Before they part ways, Joseph receives a revelation with the interesting verse, If any among you desire to ride on horses, he shall receive this blessing. Now, as random as that sounds, John Murdoch was so sick that the only way he could continue is with a lot of help. He rejoices at the Lord's understanding. Hiram purchases a horse, and they continue on to Zion. Oh boy. Our loving Heavenly Father usually lets us struggle a lot on life's journey to teach us and let us grow. President Hinckley explained, anyone who imagines that bliss is normal is going to waste a lot of time running around shouting that he's been wrong. Life is like an old-time rail journey, full of delays, sidetracks, smoke, dust, interspersed only occasionally by beautiful vistas and thrilling bursts of speed. The trick is to thank the Lord for letting you have the ride. So keep smiling and remember the Lord's promise. Be of good cheer, little children, for I am in your midst and have not forsaken you. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, the leadership of the church in Kirtland is really struggling. They need the prophet to help put out some big fires. It takes a lot to make these videos, so to keep line upon line free for everyone, consider donating through Patreon. The link's in the description below. And thanks for watching. This episode is packed with info, so you might want to watch it again to make sure you didn't miss anything, including the hilarious jokes. If you feel this video has helped you on your path towards truth and Christian discipleship, please subscribe and share. Most importantly, go read the scriptures for yourself. The scriptures teach us about Jesus Christ. 
Let's think about some reasons why we love Jesus. In Doctrine and Covenants 61, 1, 2, and 36, it talks about how Jesus is the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. So one reason is because he is all-powerful and knows everything. It also goes on to say that he forgives sins and is merciful to those who confess their sins with, a hum- with humble hearts. And then it goes on to say that we should be of good cheer, for he is with us and has not forsaken us. There are so many ways that Jesus loves and serves and helps us. When we learn about Jesus Christ, our faith in him can grow stronger. The scriptures teach us many things about Jesus Christ. And if we read the scriptures, we can learn all about him. Jesus Christ is powerful. He had the power to create the earth. He also had the power to calm the storms and the seas. And he had the power to conquer sin and death. Can you imagine if Jesus Christ wasn't powerful? If he wasn't powerful, he might not have enough power to be our savior, and we couldn't have strong faith in him. But he is powerful. Jesus Christ knows all things. He knows about the stars, about plants and animals. He knows all of God's laws. And he knows each one of us. Can you imagine if Jesus Christ didn't know all things? If he didn't know all things, then he might not know how to be our savior, and we couldn't have strong faith in him. But he does know all things. Jesus Christ keeps his promises. He does not ever lie. If he says he'll do something, he will do it. When he promises to give us peace, he will keep his promise. And when he makes a covenant with us, he will never break it. Can you imagine if Jesus Christ didn't keep his promises? If he broke a promise, we couldn't trust him, and we couldn't have strong faith in him. But he keeps all of his promises. Jesus Christ loves us perfectly. He loves each one of us so much. He will not forget about any of us. And if any of us are lost, he will come and find us. He invites all to come unto him. Imagine if Jesus Christ didn't love everyone? We would wonder, does he love me? Does he remember me? And we couldn't have strong faith in him. But he does love us. He loves each one of us perfectly. Jesus Christ loves us perfectly. Jesus Christ keeps all of his promises. Jesus Christ knows all things. And Jesus Christ is powerful. The more we know about Jesus Christ, 
the stronger our faith in Him can grow. The scriptures teach us many things about Jesus Christ. And if we read the scriptures, we can learn all about Him. Behold, and hearken unto the voice of Him who has all power. He is from everlasting to everlasting even Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Jesus wants us to share his gospel. When we share what we know about the gospel, Heavenly Father is pleased with us. The Lord asked the Prophet Joseph Smith and other church leaders to preach the gospel along the way with their missionary travels and as they returned home. In Doctrine and Covenants 62.3 it says, Ye are blessed, for the testimony which ye have borne is recorded in, the, in heaven for the angels to look upon, and they rejoice over you, and your sins are forgiven you. The Lord is pleased with us when we share the gospel with others. Think of what you would say to someone if they asked you what you love about Jesus Christ and His Church. A child's testimony can be just as powerful as an adult's, because the power of testimony doesn't come from a person's age or experience, but from the Holy Ghost. As you keep the commandments and live the gospel of Jesus Christ, your lives will be different from those around you and people will start to ask you about those things and you can use those times as good opportunities to share the gospel. I know in my life I've been asked, hey, why are you so happy all the time? Or why do you seem so peaceful when all these crazy things are going on around us? And at those times I was able to explain about the gospel of Jesus Christ and how living his gospel brings me peace and joy. People will probably also ask you throughout your lives why you don't drink coffee or alcohol. Those are good opportunities to explain about the gospel. Let's pretend that someone has asked you why you go to church. What would you say? Or maybe they would ask you why you don't play sports on Sunday or why you don't want to go to the movies with them on Sunday. What are some good answers that you could give them? What if a friend saw you wearing a CTR ring or reading the Book of Mormon and they asked you about it? What would you say about those things? When we live the gospel of Jesus Christ, our lives will be a testimony and will open up opportunities to share the gospel throughout our lives.
the Lord is willing to forgive us when we repent. Joseph Smith and other church leaders were not perfect. Sometimes they argued and were impatient. But the Lord was merciful to them and always offered forgiveness if they repented. In Doctrine and Covenants 61 verse 2, it says that the Lord forgives sins and is merciful unto those who confess their sins with humble hearts. What do we learn from these verses about how the Savior feels about us when we make mistakes? For Little Friends Showing Sorry by Hilary M. Hendricks Help me, dear Father, to truly repent, making things right and changing my ways. Children's Songbook, page 99. Eli ran through the living room, jumping over piles of laundry on the floor as his baby brother Asher watched. Woohoo! Be careful not to land on the laundry. Eli's foot knocked over a stack of washcloths. Asher laughed as the washcloths flew all over. Eli laughed too. They both laughed as he jumped from one stack of laundry to the next and kicked them over. Mom walked back into the room. Eli stopped in the middle of a kick and fell down on Asher. Asher started to cry. Oh, Eli. Sorry, Asher. Sorry, Mom. Thank you for saying sorry, but what are you going to do to fix this problem? I don't know. Can I go play with my toys? Eli, when we do something that hurts someone and we say sorry, there is something else we need to do. What? We need to show we are sorry by making things better. Eli wanted to show he was sorry. He ran to Asher's toy box, grabbed a stuffed cheetah, and waved it in front of Asher's face. Then he did a silly dance. Asher laughed. Next, Eli helped Mom fold all the washcloths he knocked over. Good job. Then Eli ran to the piano and made up a new song for his mom. Wow, Eli, that is my most favorite song ever. Now am I done being sorry? Absolutely, and I'm done being angry too. In Doctrine and Covenants 62 verse 1, it says that Jesus Christ is on our side, and that he knows our weaknesses, and he also knows how to help us when we are tempted. What if there were things you could never take back? Words. Decisions. Mistakes. A world where every heartache lasted forever, where every wound never healed. No autocorrect, no backspace, no delete. A world where man only drifts farther and farther away from happiness, from peace, from God. That's what the world would be like without a savior. Thankfully, that world doesn't exist. Because one quiet night, long ago, in a tiny town, a child was born. Born to change all hearts, end all goodbyes, fix all mistakes. Born to overcome anguish, regret, depression, fear. He understands you. He heals us. He can bridge the lonely gap between God and man and bring us home if we let him, if we love him, if we follow him. That's why we celebrate. That's why we sing. And that's why he was born. What are some ways that we can follow his example and be like him? 
follow me. It's a simple request, sometimes spoken from a mother to a child, a brother to a sister, a friend to a friend. It's a request that requires trust, belief, action. It requires you to put your faith in a person who will lead you to safety, to peace. A long time ago, Jesus Christ spoke these simple words to his closest friends, and his invitation still stands today. Come, follow me. Follow me and I will show you how to love others and love yourself. Follow me and I will show you how to repent and be forgiven and forgive others. Follow me to turn things around, to start over, to navigate the storms of life and the storms of death. Follow me to find purpose, your purpose, God's purpose. He taught us the way, he showed us the way. And when we follow his way, we find new life. The Lord wants us to use our agency and His Spirit to make good choices. Think about a time when you had to make a decision. How did you decide what to do? What has the Lord given us to help us make choices? The Holy Ghost, right! I know in my life when I have to make a big decision or don't know which direction to go, I pray about it and then I use all the information I know of to make the decision that I feel best about. The Spirit helps us feel calm and peaceful or excited and happy about certain decisions. But it's important that when we ask, we ask with humble hearts and we ask being very sincere and being willing to put the Lord's will above our own and do what He wants more than what we want. He also doesn't expect us to ask Him about every single little thing. He wants us to use our own judgment and our own agency to make a lot of choices in life, like what color socks should I wear today, or should I have cereal or oatmeal for breakfast? Sometimes those decisions are important for us, but sometimes he just wants us to make the best choice based on the information that we already know. Now we're going to listen to a book that is read by Flor Gomez called I Can Make Good Choices. I Can Make Good Choices by David Parker. Which shirt should I wear when it is cold outside? Do I cross the street in the middle or at the corner? I stop. I think I can make a good choice. Do I look at my classmates' paper and copy the answer? Should I tell the truth even if it is hard to do? Should I scream and shout? or talk about how I am feeling inside. I stop. I think I can make a good choice. Should I take something that belongs to me, that doesn't belong to me even if I really like it? Should I walk or run on the stairs? Should I say something nice or something mean to my classmates? I stop. I think I can make a good choice. Should I do something that I know isn't right because my friend tells me to? 
Should I go with someone I do not know? I stop. I think I can make a good choice. What are two good choices you made today? As a review of today's lesson, I invite you to practice sharing the gospel with a family member. You could share something that you learned today in primary. Bearing your testimony, even in practice, will help your testimony become stronger. Your testimony can be as simple as, I know Heavenly Father loves each of us, or, I feel good inside as I learn about Jesus Christ. And that concludes this week's lesson. Thanks so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. Our closing song is I Want to Be a Missionary Now, as shown from the Come Follow Me Music 2020 YouTube channel. Mm -hmm.